Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be making an interactive oven card using the Sprinkled with Joy stamp set and some dies that go with it. So the stamp set from Lawn Fawn has an oven and lots of cookie baking types of things, different uh, cookie cutters and little things that you can decorate with. You can use these little solid ones if you're going to stamp your frostings and stuff. Lots of great sentiments to go with it. And I'm going to use the add-on set of dies. There's a regular set of dies, normal ones that cut out all those pieces, but this is an add-on and I thought this was kind of interesting. So I'm going to show you how I stamped my stamp directly inside the center of the die. Because it took me a long while. I watched a number of videos to try to figure this out and hopefully this will help you if you have not gone through the rigors of researching that. But I'm leaving my die in the piece that I'm going to be using. And I'm, I'm also using some heavy weight cardstock, some 110, and I've lined it up using a piece of acetate first. And the acetate means that I can see where I'm going to actually stamp it and make sure it's going to line up inside my die cut because I want it to line up perfectly. And so here I'm stamping it, didn't get it exactly right, but rather than move the stamp and try to nudge it over a little bit, I'm going to nudge my paper underneath of that piece of acetate. So the acetate has to be right in the corner so it stays put and then I can just align it exactly where I want it and then take off the acetate, put on my magnet so it holds in place and then stamp it and when I stamp it this time it's going to be perfectly aligned. So if you've ever had trouble with that, that's my solution for that. I wanted to do two shelves in the oven because I like to bake lots of cookies at once, I don't do just one shelf. And I did this a little bit backwards, but I'll explain a better way to do it. I did the first or the bottom tray first using a post-it note to mask it. It would be easier if you did the top one first and then masked it off and did the bottom one. So I'm doing it a little backwards here, but I decided I didn't feel like reshooting it. I would just let you see my foibles as I try to figure things out. I don't always get it right the first time like I think I would. But that piece is going to go underneath of this, and I'll show you how it assembles as we go. But the piece that goes on top, then I can see whether or not this lines up right. I did make them lower than I would like them to be, so I just need to do a little fancy paper cutting in a little bit to make them line up. But while I've got it here, I'm going to stamp all the cookies onto the cookie sheets. And there's four different cookie stamps. And like I said, there are some frosting only pieces. So if you're not going to hand color them, I'm going to color mine with colored pencils. If you're not going to hand color them, you can stamp with some ink and they're, they're solid shapes that are a little smaller than these. So it'll look like frosting. I decided to get out my colored pencils to color the images because there's not a whole ton of coloring. I'm not going to do a giant background kind of thing. And pencils are a good solution for me when I'm just doing a little bit of stuff with your Copic markers sometimes the areas that the little stamps are so small that they get a little hard to color so you can always switch to your colored pencils when you get to the smaller stuff as well. With the cookies I'm using two browns, one around the outside edges so my cookies are getting done. They're probably looking a little burnt but I wanted to make sure I had enough color on here that they looked really strong on the card and then I will color around the, the little trays. To make trays look metal just do some sort of stripes and let there be some white stripes across it as well as some gray stripes and don't make them really even just kind of let them be shiny that way the tray on the bottom can be a little darker since it's underneath and it's going to be a little more in shadow and that little piece that's off to the side by the way i'm not going to use on this card it's just sitting there i was going to use it for the handle but I decided to color around the outside of those trays so I wanted to wait and see exactly how much was going to show through on my card when I get to that stage. So we'll deal with that in a little bit. And now I'm going to use the same gray on the outside of my oven. And I always start with lighter colors and then work my way into like seeing exactly how much pigment I want to put down there. So I thought I'll try doing a little darker at the bottom, lighter at the top. And when you do layers like that, it allows you to change it up and you can decide, okay, I want to add a little more depth to this portion. And if you get it all waxy and you, you color really hard with it, it's really hard to recover from that. 
You could also go right over top of this gray pencil. If you get your shading down using the gray, all right, go right over top of it with a nice even coat of a color. So if you wanted it to be red or something, then you could get a real dusky kind of red looking oven that way by, uh, by just adding the same color on top or a new color on top of it. Or you could use a blue and make it look a little metallic and shiny that way. But I decided I wanted a standard old gray oven and then add some red and green to the elements on the oven. All the different buttons and all that kind of stuff since it's going to be a holiday card. So I'm just filling all that in. I'm using a really sharp pencil. If you haven't seen my colored pencil videos and you're interested in colored pencil, this is really fast. But I do a lot of other colored pencil videos where I give you a lot of coloring tips. But my biggest one is to make sure your pencil is good and sharp. I use a quiet sharp pencil sharpener and there's a link in the doobly-doo to that if you're interested in that. For the card assembly, I chopped off a little bit off the top of that panel because I wanted to be able to move my trays up a little bit because they were hanging too low earlier. And now I'm just kind of testing to see exactly where I'm going to slide them. I wanted to move them down a little bit, but I wanted to mark exactly how far down so I glue that panel on underneath in the right spot. So I slid it down. And now I'll take just a little pencil and mark on my card base where to align that and put my adhesive on the back and then I could just glue that down. That way when I put all this together it's going to align the way I want it to. I'm using a lot of uh, dimensional adhesive on the back of this panel. This one's going to be popped and the oven's going to be flat to the paper and you'll see why that makes a difference later. And I put uh, you saw little pieces all the way around the oven because that's going to hold the oven up and off the surface. For the this little piece it's going to insert, I'm using different widths of Be Creative tape. It's super sticky, super, super sticky, and that I like to use for interactive cards because stuff's going to hold together really well. That inside piece I covered entirely with a piece of acetate, so I had a little glass window there. And now I'll peel off the outside parts and insert the oven. Now the oven is going to be inset into the card. The background is popped up and that allows the window, the little door, to come out and, and poke forward. And there is a handle that's in the die set. And if you want to know how to assemble the handle and everything, you can go watch the Lawn Fawn channel. They've got lots of videos on how to use a lot of their dies. And then the, the little oven just kind of pops out from this receded oven. Now I've got the background behind here that I decided I wanted to have it darker black. I wanted a little bit darker color. So I'm just going to go over those areas and fill it in so that it looks like I get some depth inside of my oven. I'll just color that in with my pencils as well. I'm going to throw a little bit of a shadow underneath on the bottom just to give the oven a place to stand. But I think that's possibly overkill. You don't necessarily need quite that much if you've got your oven assembled well. And then I stamped all of this on the inside. There's so many fun stamps in this set. And since it said, you know, may your holidays be sprinkled with joy, I thought I'll have some, you know, some of the supplies for cookie baking out here on the, the inside of the card, along with a little jar of sprinkles. So the sprinkles can be coming out and spilling across the inside of the card. So I'm adding all of my shading and stuff first, and then add my little red and green sprinkles across there and pull just a little bit of red and green into the coloring of that card. So here's the finished one, which I think was really fun. I love interactive cards that the person can touch and pull and do things with. There's the little oven open, peeking into all the little cookies inside. And you can use all different kinds of mediums to color it. Lots of fun things you can do with the stamps and dies. And here's that finished inside of my card. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. I will be having more over it on my blog. If you want to pin the stills to your Pinterest board or something, you can do that. You can hit the subscribe button if you haven't as of yet. And there's also three videos here in annotations on the screen if you would like to click through and watch some more stuff by me. Thanks for stopping on by, and I will see you next time. Have an awesome day, and go out and create something beautiful. See you guys later. Bye-bye.